Guys, this video is a collaboration with a great channel called Beautiful Science. If you haven't seen it, check it out. My friend Chris makes short science videos using really cool animations. In a previous video, we looked at the smallest scales. We attempted to visualize the smallest size in the universe, the Planck length, which is about 1.6 times 10 to the negative 35 meters. This is so small that if an atom was the size of the Earth, the Planck length would be smaller than a proton. But the large scale size of the universe is equally mind-blowing. For example, if the sun was the size of a basketball, how far do you think the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, our neighbor, would be? Would it be on the other end of the basketball court? Would it be further, like maybe a mile away? Maybe 10 miles away? Take a wild guess. You would have to keep going much farther. If you were playing basketball in New York City, our neighbor, Proxima Centauri, would be about 4,500 miles away on a basketball court somewhere in Moscow. And there are 10 sextillion such stars in the universe. That is one followed by 22 zeros. And each one of them is approximately the same distance apart from each other as Proxima Centauri is from the Sun. In fact, the universe is bigger than even what our most powerful telescopes can see. How big is the universe in terms of numbers? And in fact, could it be infinite? Is there any way we can even begin to visualize what infinity is? We just might be able to do it. How? That's coming up right now. Let's start with some genius animations created by Carrie and Michael Wang, who have generously given us permission to use them. The link to their website is in the description below. We'll start with the scale of a human being and work our way up because it helps to start with something relatable. And the size of your body should be the most relatable scale, about one to three meters. These would be objects like a bicycle or a sunflower bloom. If we go 100 times bigger to about 100 meters, we will be at the scale of a Boeing 747 jet or the size of an American football field. Let's go a thousand times bigger than the scale of a human, about a thousand meters. Now we're looking at the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa, 830 meters. Also Vatican City is only about one kilometer in length. Let's go a thousand times bigger than this, one million meters. Now we're on the scale of California and Italy, both of which are about 1,200 kilometers in length. We also begin to approach now some of the smallest spherical celestial objects. The former smallest planet Pluto, which is about 2,300 kilometers in diameter. Pluto was reclassified in 2006 to the protest of many people, especially kids, to be designated a lowly dwarf planet. Let's go a thousand times larger than this scale, or one billion meters. We will now be going way past the size of the Earth, which is only about 12,742 kilometers in diameter. And we're passing even the size of Jupiter, which is more than 10 times larger in diameter than Earth, about 140,000 kilometers or 140 million meters. Jupiter is actually only slightly smaller than our nearest star neighbor, Proxima Centauri, which is only about 215,000 kilometers in diameter, much smaller than our sun, which is about 1.4 million kilometers or 1.4 billion meters. Let's go a thousand times larger than the size of the sun, or one trillion meters. Now we're looking at some of the largest and brightest stars that we can see in the Milky Way galaxy. Stars like Betelgeuse, a red supergiant, the ninth brightest star in the sky, which is 1.2 billion kilometers in diameter. One of the brightest stars in the sky is also the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy. V.Y. Canis Majoris at about 2 billion kilometers in diameter. Let's go a thousand times larger than this, or one quadrillion meters. We'll be passing by the Oort cloud, which is thought to be a spherical shell consisting of up to 2 trillion comets that surround the solar system. This is where an occasional gravitational disturbance can send a comet hurtling towards the sun, or more ominously, towards the Earth. This spherical cloud starts at about 1 trillion kilometers away from the sun and ends about 15 trillion kilometers away from the Sun. This also forms the outer boundary of our solar system, where the gravitational influence of the Sun is minimal to non-existent. Now we're at the scale of a light year, which is about 9.4 quadrillion meters, 
or 9.4 trillion kilometers. Let's go a thousand times larger than this, or one quintillion meters. This is about 100 light years. Now we can talk in terms of the scale of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, our home galaxy. We're gonna go past the size of some of the most spectacular structures in the universe. Things like the Pillars of Creation and the Eagle Nebula, as well as some of the smaller galaxies that surround our Milky Way galaxy. Our galaxy is about 106,000 light years across, or almost exactly one quintillion kilometers. That's 10 to the 21 meters, containing anywhere from 250 billion to 400 billion stars. Other than the fact that we live here, there's really nothing particularly remarkable about our galaxy. It's a typical spiral galaxy. There are billions of such galaxies in the universe. Our neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy, is larger, containing one trillion stars. When we go a thousand times larger than this, we begin to see the superstructure of the universe, which is made up of superclusters. We live in such a structure called the Virgo supercluster. It also contains Andromeda and about a hundred other galaxies. It's about 110 million light years in diameter, or 10 to the 21 or one sextillion kilometers across. They're estimated to be about 10 million superclusters in the universe. When we go a thousand times larger than this, we reach the end of the visible universe at about the scale of 10 to the 27 meters. The observable universe has a diameter of about 93 billion light years, almost exactly 10 to the 27 meters. How is it that the universe is only 13.8 billion years old, but it's 93 billion light years across? Shouldn't it be 13.8 billion light years across? If nothing can travel faster than light? That's a great question because it's pretty confusing. First, 13.8 billion light years would be the radius of a sphere. So the diameter would be twice that or 27.6 billion light years. This is basically what we see in the W map or universe's microwave background photo. In fact, each of the red bumps you see on this photo has evolved into a supercluster that I talked about earlier. But the reason our universe is actually 93 billion light years across and not 13.8 billion light years across is because the universe has been expanding for the entire 13.8 billion years. And due to the cosmological redshift, we know that the farther away an object is, the faster it appears to be moving away from us. And we can calculate that those superclusters of galaxies based on the expansion of the universe would be 46.5 billion light years from us by this time. That's the radius, so the diameter of the universe would be twice that, or 93 billion light years across. In fact, if we waited 46.5 billion years, we would be able to see the light emitted right now from those superclusters because the light would have started on its journey towards us just about now. But we will actually never eventually see this light because in 1998, we discovered something called dark energy and learned that the universe is not in a steady expansion, but rather an accelerating expansion so that light will be receding from us at greater than the speed of light. But isn't the speed of light the cosmic speed limit? Yes, for things traveling within space, but there's no limit on the expansion of space itself. The space between galaxies is expanding faster than light. The galaxies are not traveling within space faster than light. But could it be though that what we can actually see is just a minuscule portion of a universe that's actually infinite? Is there any way to determine whether the universe could be infinite? Well, the cosmic microwave background gives us a clue. It's the leftover glow from the Big Bang. Although it looks fairly uniform, there is a lot of information there. One of the things that this microwave background tells us is that the universe appears to be flat. How do we know this? Scientists look for what we would see if the universe was a certain shape. They look for the curvature of space. If space was not flat, but positively curved, like a four-dimensional sphere, then we would expect to see multiple images of the same object in the sky because distant light rays would converge. This is like ants on a balloon trying to measure the flatness of their 2D universe by adding up the angles in a triangle to make sure that they add up to 180 degrees. In a positively curved universe, the angles would add up to greater than 180 degrees. Likewise, distant light rays would diverge if we lived in a negatively curved space, shaped like a saddle, and the angles would add up to less than 180 degrees. 
Data from the WMAP as well as Planck spacecraft, however, indicates that the universe is flat, or nearly flat, with an error of about 0.4%. A flat universe would be an infinite universe, but if the error is taken into account, then it is possible that the universe could have a slightly positive curvature. In that case, it would be finite, but would have to be a radius at least 250 times larger than the part that we can see. This would be a minimum size of about 11.6 trillion light years in radius, or about 23 trillion light years in diameter, instead of the 93 billion that we can see. This is huge, but would be much, much smaller than infinity. Infinity is a very large number. Imagine a really large number, like a Google, the real Google, spelled differently than what you're used to seeing. This is 10 to the 100 light years. That's one followed by 100 zeros. Or a Googleplex, which is 10 to the 10 to the 100 power. That's 10 to the Google power. An extremely large number, much larger than even the Planck volume that would fit inside the observable universe, which would be about 4.7 times 10 to the 185 Planck volumes. But infinity would be much, much larger than either of those numbers. It goes on forever, after all. Imagine the Earth being a perfect sphere and an ant trying to figure out its curvature by drawing large triangles and seeing if the angles add up to 180. It may conclude that the Earth is flat. So our universe appears to be consistent with a flat universe, although we can't rule out a curved universe. So our best guess is, right now, that the universe is infinite. But infinities in science tend to be due to errors so we should be skeptical about this result. What we do know for sure is that the universe is much larger than the part that we can observe. The problem is we only have access to the information contained in our tiny 93 billion light year bubble that we call the observable universe. We can only infer from what we can see. This is like a sailor on a boat in the open sea in the middle of the Pacific Ocean at night, trying to figure out where the ocean ends with nothing with the stars to guide him. Guys, I talked about some of the largest numbers, but my friend Chris over at Beautiful Science has a great video on some of the smallest numbers and scales. Numbers that I think you're gonna find very interesting. So click the link in the description to see his video. And if you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. Be sure to check out some of our other popular videos. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.